If you are in the market for a new air conditioner, you are probably being bombarded with lots of different information and opinions and are wondering what SEER rating you should buy. Well, you've come to the right place because in this video, we are going to answer all of your questions and provide you with a basic how-to guide on how to get the best air conditioner for your particular situation. And we'll be answering questions like, what does SEER mean? What is the difference between SEER and EAR rating? What is the best SEER for your particular region? And at the end of this video, there'll be a link to another video that talks about one of our favorite air conditioners that we think is the absolute best bang for your buck depending on the region you're in. And before we get started, if you haven't done so already, please like this video and subscribe to the channel. It takes a lot of time and energy to put out content like this and it's a free way you can support the channel. Thank you so much for your support. All right, let's get back to it. So what is a SEER rating anyways? SEER or S-E-E-R stands for Seasonal Energy Efficiency Ratio. Now this is very similar to EAR rating, which simply stands for, you guessed it, Energy Efficiency Ratio. And right now let's talk about what that means and what the difference is between these two ratings. Now, Seasonal Energy Efficiency Ratio is provided by the AHRI and that rates the efficiency of a given air conditioner and based on how it performs during peak usage months. Now, that is why the rating is referred to as your seasonal energy efficiency ratio, because it's measuring how efficient the system is during peak season. Now, the EER rating, on the other hand, is a measurement of the system's energy efficiency on an annual basis, regardless of how it performs during peak season. And you might be thinking if something has a high SEER rating, wouldn't that make it also have a higher EAR rating? And although you would think so, that's not actually the case. Now, before we go any further, I'm going to interject and tell you that the following statement is just my opinion based on practical experience in the field. But here's the truth about the two different ratings. You can almost disregard the EER rating. And my reasoning behind this is that there are some very efficient systems out there like the Dyke and Fit or VRV Life, for example, that have a very high C rating, but the EER rating is very low. However, I have personally tested the systems in action. And by testing, I mean hooked up meters to measure the amount amount of electricity being consumed by these systems on startup and ramping up and down throughout the day and can tell you from firsthand experience that they pull a fraction of the power that a traditional system pulls. And in addition to this, the reason I believe the EER rating is obsolete and inaccurate is because there are systems that are far less efficient and we have measured their energy efficiency firsthand in terms of how much power they consume. Yet some of them have a higher EER rating according to the AHRI than some of the inverter systems I just mentioned. Now, that being said, this is just my opinion and other contractors may or may not agree with what I'm saying, but it is a 100% truth that inverters are by far the most efficient systems. And the video that's linked at the end of this video will explain why. And one other benefit of inverter systems is that they are absolutely the quietest systems on the market. So now that we've established what a SEER rating is, let's talk about what SEER rating is best for your particular situation. And as you might have guessed, typically the higher the SEER rating, the more expensive the unit is. Now this is because more efficient equipment typically utilizes higher end technology that costs more money to manufacture and also install. However, the fact of the matter is that if you're going to be in the house long enough, typically you'll recoup the cost in terms of energy savings along the way. So that's the number one consideration when choosing your SEER rating, and that is how long do you plan on staying in the home? For example, if you're planning on selling the home next year or turning it into a rental, unless you feel an ethical inclination to get a higher efficiency system for environmental reasons, you really want to get the most economical system possible because it's a rental and your renter won't take good care of it, or you're going to sell it soon. And when you do sell it, you probably won't get your money's worth for advertising that you just installed a high-end system. Now, the exception to this would be if you upgraded to a system like VRV Life or you added additional features like zoning, for example, because that will definitely add to the value of the home, but it is definitely not a dollar in, dollar out sort of scenario. I would not bank on recouping all of your costs, but it will be an added selling point at closing uh, if you're selling a home, for example. However, if this is your dream home and you plan on staying here for a while or indefinitely, then it might make sense to splurge and get the nicest system that you can afford. This will definitely pay off in the long run because energy prices over a 10 year period or longer almost always 
have an upward trajectory. Now, the number two consideration is your climate. Now, your climate will dictate how often the system will be running. And if you live somewhere in Florida or Texas, for example, where the air conditioner might be running seven or eight months out of the year, or potentially even year round, if you need it for dehumidification purposes, then in that case, you absolutely want to get the most efficient system that you can afford, simply because it will definitely pay for itself in the long run and have a much shorter break even period in terms of energy cost savings because of how often it is running. And that brings me to my next point, and that is homes that are on solar power. And if you have not subscribed to the channel already, please make sure you do so because there will be a video coming out shortly about the best air conditioner for homes with solars. And if you have solar panels, you won't want to miss that video. So in summary, when choosing your SEER rating by region, if you are in a predominant cooling climate that is very hot, like Phoenix, Arizona, or Houston, Texas, for example, where it's hot and sweaty year round, the higher the SEER rating, the better. And that statement just made is only partially true. And I'll touch on why now because there's a few types of systems that are actually the best regardless of their SEER rating. Now, if you were paying attention earlier, you might have heard me mention inverter systems like the Daikin Fit or VRV Life. And these are the best types of systems in general because they are much more comfortable and quieter on startup. But an added financial benefit is that as a result, they are much more efficient because they ramp up and down based on demand rather than cranking on 100% or 50% like a traditional single stage or two stage. So in summary, I'll give you some actual SEER rating numbers so you know exactly what we're looking at. And depending on the part of the country that you're in or what region you're in, your minimum SEER ratings are either going to be 13 or 14. And this is going to be the absolute minimum SEER rating you're even able to purchase. And it's normally going to be the best bang for your buck if it's a rental or if it's in a region where it's not going to be run that often. And an inverter will still be quieter. So if you only run your AC a few months, but uh, it still might make sense to splurge and get a higher end inverter, but that is a comfort factor, not so much a savings factor. Uh, you'll also wanna take into consideration home size because again, if it's a very small property, your energy costs are going to be much lower lower on a thousand square foot home, for example, than they will be for a 5,000 square foot home. But if you're in the mountains in Colorado, for example, and only run your air conditioner one month out of the year, or you live oceanfront in Southern California, the only reason I would get a high efficiency inverter system is because of how quiet they are. But again, the energy savings will not be there if you don't use the system that often. Now, the next step above your basic 13 or 14 SEER system will typically be a 16 SEER single stage system. There's not really a massive difference, honestly, in my opinion. And even jumping into a two stage 16 SEER or two stage or three stage 18 SEER system is not really worth it and not what I'd put in my house. And I know I'm going to get some hate in the comments for that from contractors that might disagree with me, but I'll explain my reasoning. Now, typically, what when we are giving estimates, our good, better, best bids includes three options. Now, the first option would be your basic cheap 13 or 14 SEER for someone who is just looking for an entry level piece of equipment that is for a rental or if they don't use their air conditioner that much. And I would say this accounts for about a third of our system sales in Colorado. Our two better options, which accounts for the majority of our sales, is either a 16 SEER single stage or Daikin Fit. And more often than not, people are opting for the Daikin Fit because right now, the price jump for us between a single stage 16 SEER and the Daikin Fit is not that much. And the Daikin Fit is a side discharge inverter and it is a 17 SEER system. And in my opinion, is a much better system than even an 18 SEER three stage option because inverters are so quiet on startup and the actual measured energy savings is typically 30% or more when compared with a single stage system. Again, I don't know why more people don't buy these and more brands don't offer a mid-range inverter variable speed compressor system because they are absolutely a game changer technology in terms of the comfort factor and how quiet they are. And in my eyes, the efficiency savings is just an added benefit. Now, if you run your system at least three months out of the year, the break even on these air conditioners will be anywhere between five and 10 years, depending on your electricity costs in the area. And if you happen to live in Southern California, it might be even sooner because I know that energy costs there have skyrocketed recently. And our best option that we would normally offer is a VRV life system. And the reason that that's our best 
is because it has zoning capabilities. So if someone wants central air, but also wants a head unit upstairs in the master bedroom, for example, it's a great way to zone the house. And now you are able to cool things off in the rooms you are using instead of keeping your entire home ice cold. And this is typically a larger price jump because of the added labor with installation of multiple head units and zoning capacity. But for people that want to really be able to zone their system and zone their comfort, you can't go wrong. Uh, it's what I have in my house and it's what we have installed at our warehouse and in addition the reliability is top-notch it typically takes a week or two of tweaking the settings to get them optimized as there's a lot of features that you can play with but after having installed several of them I can say we're confident installing them and love that they work reliably the most important part is the design considerations so that the system is engineered properly when it's first designed for your home and as far as ratings go these systems are 18 to 20 sear depending on system System size and I'll add one other nuance to this conversation and that's that in regions like Phoenix for example where your system is running constantly because it is so hot another system that tends to work well in these markets is the DX 20 VC which is now rebranded as the DX 9 but they're literally the same system just a different model number for compliance with the new SEER 2 laws and if you're wondering what SEER 2 laws are do not worry about it it's basically bureaucracy is the long and short but Bottom line is that if you plan on living in your home for a while and happen to live in a very hot market like Phoenix, for example, an inverter product like the Daikin DZ9 or VRV Life is definitely worth it. And if you haven't done so already, please make sure you subscribe to the channel and smash that like button and post a comment in the comment section below. Do you still have unanswered questions? Did you find this video helpful? Let us know in the comment section because we do read and respond to all the comments and we want to make sure that we're putting out information that you find helpful and if you happen to be in the denver metro or colorado springs area or one of the other markets that we service in arizona or texas there's a link in the description below that allows you to book online with one of our technicians and in addition to providing free estimates for system replacements we are also the only company that comes out for free for all first-time customers and we actually come out for a free service call or annual maintenance just for giving us a try so make sure you check that out in the description if you need our help and as promised there's a video popping up on the screen right now and that links to video that's one of our favorite air conditioners, the Daikin Fit, and it explains how inverters work and it explains why it's one of our favorite ACs. So thanks again for tuning in and we will catch you on the next episode.